Can you believe in Florida, U.S., black children were used as bait for alligators during the 19th and early 20th centuries? It sounds horrifying, but what's more brutal is that the U.S. is making efforts to erase this from history. Today, even the black people living in Florida don't know about this. These efforts to erase black history are unacceptable because they remind us of the unfair treatment they endured for just existing. But why were black children used as bait in the first place? And why do people still don't know about it? Has Florida successfully removed the evidence? Let's discuss this piece of history we were very close to losing. The Black History Archives In the 1800s and early 1900s, people hunted alligators to make money. They wanted the alligator's skin to sell because its products were in high demand. This trade became a way for some to earn money. Back then, the people who came and settled in new places, particularly rich white settlers, thought there was much of everything in the land they found. They believed they could use as much as they wanted without any problems. Most of the lands the white people took belonged to black people. It was because of the disregard for black people's lives and property at that time. This thinking led to them using up much of the land's resources, and the animals suffered too. One of the animals that went near extinction was the alligator. Alligator hunting became a popular activity, almost like a sport. Many people participated in it, hoping to make a good living by selling alligator skin. However, hunting alligators was not easy, and it came with dangers. The hunters risked losing their arms or even their lives during fatal hunting. Despite the risks, the high demand for alligator skin products made the trade lucrative for those willing to take the chance. But things got ugly when, in the early 1900s, the world witnessed a dark chapter in history as shocking reports surfaced about a horrifying practice that involved the use of black children as bait to lure alligators. This tactic aimed to streamline the hunting process, revealing a disturbing willingness to exploit black children for the sake of money. Although not extensively documented due to efforts to erase it from history, evidence in newspapers and postcards suggest that this disturbing practice occurred in some parts of the American South. As alligator hunting gained popularity in the early 20th century, hunters sought ways to make the process more efficient. During this time, reports emerged detailing a ghastly method employed by some hunters to attract alligators. Black children, tragically, became the unsuspecting victims of this heinous tactic. Hunters would allegedly take these black children, placing them in pens or tying them near alligator dens to attract the reptiles for a quicker and more efficient kill. Some people say that they don't believe anything like the practice of using black children as bait for alligator hunting happened as it is not extensively documented. However, it is not documented primarily because the state tried to remove it from historical records. By the end of the video, we will also share some evidence to prove that gator bait occurred, so stick to the end. The intentional erasing of this dark chapter in history further complicates efforts to fully understand the extent to which it occurred. However, fragments of evidence found in newspapers and postcards shed light on the unsettling reality that this inhumane practice occurred in certain areas of the American South. Newspapers from the early 1900s provide chilling glimpses into the exploitation of children for alligator hunting. Headlines and articles, though limited in number, narrate the horrifying incidents where black children were used as bait. These reports reveal a shocking disregard for human life as hunters prioritized their convenience over the well-being of innocent black children. Since black children were born slaves according to the laws in the U.S., using them as bait did not appear unethical. Postcards, once considered a popular form of communication and documentation, also contribute to the evidence of this gruesome practice. Some postcards depicted scenes of alligator hunting, showcasing children in dangerous situations near alligator-infested waters. These images, coupled with the sinister reports in newspapers, paint the distressing picture of an era in which the exploitation of children was deemed acceptable for the sake of a more efficient hunt. Using children as bait for alligator hunting speaks to a broader issue of societal attitudes and values prevalent during that time. It reflects a disturbing disregard for the lives of black children highlighting the systemic racism and dehumanization that characterized the American South in the early 1900s. 
The willingness of some hunters to view children as expendable tools for their gain exposes a deeply rooted problem that extends beyond alligator hunting. What makes Florida appear even cruel is its efforts to remove this cruelty from the documents. Here's a reminder to please support us so we can make more videos for you by subscribing to our channel and giving the video a like. We want to build a strong community and we need your support. Let's continue now. The intentional removal of such information reflects a desire to whitewash the past and minimize the acknowledgement of the atrocities committed. However, it is crucial to confront and remember these dark moments in history to prevent the repetition of such egregious acts and foster a collective commitment to justice and equality. While the practice of using children as bait for alligator hunting remains an objectionable part of history, acknowledging and learning from these uncomfortable truths is essential. By confronting the darker aspects of our past, society can work towards ensuring that such atrocities are never repeated. Now you must think, if Florida tried to hide this, how is it still not completely removed from history? The Jim Crow laws, enacted from the 1870s to the 1960s, were a series of state and local laws that enforced racial segregation in the southern United States. These laws aim to undermine the rights of African Americans that the Reconstruction Amendments following the Civil War had granted. The Jim Crow laws perpetuated a racial hierarchy, systematically subjecting black individuals to humiliation, segregation, and economic marginalization. These discriminatory laws extended beyond public spaces, influencing every aspect of life, from education to employment. In this environment of systemic racism, dehumanizing narratives like the gator bait legend found a space to spread, contributing to a culture of racial hatred and prejudice. The gator bait, rooted in racism, had far-reaching consequences for African-American communities during the Jim Crow era. Beyond the immediate horror of the practice itself, the perpetuation of this further marginalized black individuals and reinforced negative stereotypes. It contributed to a culture of fear, where the safety and well-being of African-American children were jeopardized by a society that viewed them as expendable. But what made the white people so brutal on black children? In the world of media and popular culture, the dehumanization of black children has been a troubling issue that has fueled a climate of racial hatred. This harmful portrayal has contributed to justifying violence and discrimination against African Americans, making it easier for society to ignore the injustices they face. Gator Bait, although not the sole contributor, played a significant role in perpetuating a cycle of dehumanization that took decades to confront and overcome. When black children are dehumanized in the media and popular culture, it creates a distorted image that can lead to events like the killing of black children by police in some recent cases. This dehumanization not only affects how society perceives black children, but also contributes to justifying violence and discrimination against African Americans as a whole. By portraying black children in a negative light, the media has played a role in shaping public opinion and perpetuating harmful stereotypes. So, the dehumanization of black children in the media and popular culture has had severe consequences. It has contributed to the justification of violence and discrimination against African Americans, creating an environment where society can turn a blind eye to the injustices they face. Some white people, instead of showing sympathy, have dismissed the notion of gator bait as nothing more than a false tale. However, the state of Florida itself took a decisive step in 2020 confirming the reality behind these claims. In the past, the University of Florida made a significant move by officially banning gator bait, shedding light on its existence. In other words, something is only banned when it is being carried out in the first place. The controversy surrounding the term gator bait has been debated, with some asserting that it was merely a myth or an unfounded story. Despite these dismissals, the University of Florida's action to ban it was a concrete acknowledgement that the concept was real. Gator bait stands as evidence of the harsh events that happened to black people. Efforts to erase this historical chapter can be seen as a dismissal of the sacrifices made by the black community. Did you know about this brutality that occurred in Florida? Is it necessary for the U.S. to censor and wipe out this history? Or do you deserve to know it? Why do you think the states are removing this history? Is it to forget about the gloomy past or just to erase the proof that white people were ever cruel? 
Let us know in the comments section. After you know that Florida tried to remove the proof, does it remain an anti-racist state in your eyes? Would you like us to make more videos? If yes, please support us by subscribing to the Black History Archives and clicking the bell icon. You can check out more videos on our channel too.